All right, so in the last four lessons that we have in this semester, we're going to cover the four different market structures. And in today's lesson, we're going to focus on perfect competition. Now, in order to understand perfect competition, we have to go to two of the dimensions of market structure. We're going to talk about market power, which remember is an issue of whether uh, an industry or whether a company is a price setter or a price taker. And also we're going to talk about uh, product differentiation, which means whether the product is heterogeneous or homogeneous. Now these two concepts are very related to each other. We're primarily talking about price setters and price takers right now, but we're going to understand that by understanding the products that are produced, whether the products are very different, heterogeneous, or whether they're very much the same, homogeneous. Okay, And so here's the argument that I want to make. So if you want to write down one big idea from this particular uh, segment of the lesson, it's this. It's that price setters have a downward sloping demand curve, but Price takers have a horizontal demand curve. And I know that sounds weird because this whole semester, every time we look at a market graph, we see a downward sloping demand curve. And if the demand curve is horizontal, then that means that there is no relationship between price and quantity. And I'm going to argue that for perfect competition, that is exactly the case, that perfect competitors don't have a relationship between the quantity they produce and the price they charge. And the reason for that is because perfect competitors, they don't get to change their price. They are price takers. And, I, and that's where I'm ultimately going in this first part of, the, uh, of this lesson. All right, so here's, the, here's how I'm going to make the argument. We're going to talk about two different kinds of products. Up here we have uh, we have uh, frozen produce. We're going to talk about frozen corn. I don't know if you like frozen corn, but I like frozen corn. I mean, I don't eat it frozen. I put it in the microwave or I you know, boil it in a pan. But I like to cook up some frozen corn and put some butter and salt on it. That's good stuff. And then the other one is uh, passenger vehicles, okay? So personal vehicles. Um, now, you're probably familiar with the Honda Civic. The Honda Civic is a very popular car. I actually drive a Honda Civic. Uh, but uh, back in the late 1980s and the early 1990s, Ford had a model of vehicle called the Tempo, the Ford Tempo. And so we're going to compare the Honda Civic and the Ford Tempo, okay? And here's basically what I'm saying is uh, that homogeneous products, okay? So if you go buy frozen corn from Publix or buy frozen corn, let's say, Green Giant brand, now, I promise you that they're going to want you, you know, Publix wants you to buy their frozen corn and Green Giant wants you to buy their frozen corn. But... Um, you know, it's really, in my opinion, it's really hard to argue why Green Giant frozen corn is different than Publix frozen corn. Maybe you can tell the difference. I've had students say they can tell the difference, and that's fine. But generally speaking, uh, frozen corn is frozen corn, okay? And we call that a homogeneous product, okay? And what the argument that I'm going to make here is this, is that for homogeneous products, and you're going to want to write this down. I don't have a lot of space up here, but you write this down. For homogeneous products, all of the different producers of homogeneous products, they share one demand curve. They're all, it's, it's, an, it's a product demand curve for all of the producers of that one product. And here's an example of how, of, of why I'm going to make that argument. Because Let's just talk about demand. We could go into supply, but but and you, you could think it through yourself, but let's just talk about demand, okay? Let's say that people really want a lot of, they're really enjoying frozen corn, and the demand for frozen corn goes up. Well, if the demand for frozen corn goes up, it's very likely that you will see an increase in demand, which means a rightward shift of the demand curve, okay? So there's D prime for Publix frozen corn and for Green Giant frozen corn, 
okay? People are gonna, probably going to buy both of them. And there's, there are probably several interesting reasons, because people have more income, or because uh, corn is very popular during a certain time of the year. But you're probably going to see an increase in demand for both of them, because both of them, the products, are very homogeneous. And so their, mar their individual market graphs are going to behave very similarly. Therefore, for a homogeneous product, there is one demand curve for the, for the whole industry. For the entire industry, there is one demand curve. Okay? But now let's talk about passenger vehicles. So I'm going to I'm going to talk about the early 90s. So so uh, you can look this up yourself on Wikipedia if you want to. First of all, uh, if you took my macroeconomics class uh, or any macroeconomics class, you probably learned about uh, real GDP growth. You know how production in the economy can can go up a lot or not go up very much or it can actually decrease from one year to the next. 1992, I believe it was. Uh, 1992 or 1993, between 1992 and 1993, very good year. We had about 2 to 3 percent uh, real GDP growth. That's good for the economy, 2 to 3 percent. Let's go ahead and call it 3 percent because then into 1994, uh, it was it, it was.